doing a study on the war that we're in. Every Christian's at war. Might not realize it, but you're at war. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And uh, Last week we started this up and we found out that uh, we are at war and there's three first steps that you need to take when you realize you're at war. First off, the first step, you need to recognize you're at war. You need to recognize that you're at war. So many Christians are living today, uh, today in, in this world and they don't realize they're at war. They're walking around like we're at peacetime. You're not at peacetime, friends. Brothers and sisters, you're at war. You know, you want to wonder why things don't go right in your life sometimes is because you're at war. The enemy's hitting you. You don't even realize what's happening. Second step we need to recognize is we need to recognize the enemy. Enemies, the devil, the world, and the third enemy nobody likes to admit is ourselves. Amen. Your flesh. Your flesh. Now, eventually we're going to get in. I'm, I'm going to preach on our flesh and how we can handle that. That's the main one. That's your main enemy. These right here, we're, we're talking about the world and the devil this morning and how to equip ourselves to fight the world and the devil this morning, but really the main enemy is ourselves. Amen. And when I, I, I mess up and things happen bad in my life and I, I commit sin, I, I don't ever say, oh, the devil made me do it. I, don't ever, I, I know who made me do it. It was Keegan. It was me. I was the one that, I'm stupid that way, and that's the stuff we have to fight. And the third step you have to, when you're at war, you recognize you're at war, you recognize your enemy, and the third step is you fight back. Don't look, roll over and, and, and play dead. You don't show your belly. You don't run from the enemy. You fight back. That's what we need to be doing as Christians. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, starting there around verse 10, we're going we're gonna to talk about this morning how to equip ourselves to fight back. How to equip, equip, our, equip ourselves to fight back against the devil and the world. Because now that you recognize you're at war, you recognize you've got an enemy, every, every person that's at war, they need to equip themselves to fight a war. Right? That's what you do. And we read in Romans, and let me read, back, let me read that to you, because some of you weren't in here last week, but in Romans, let me read to you, chapter 13. Well, let me read back at verse 7 just to get a context so you all know what we, kind of what we're talking about this morning. Paul said, uh, but I see another law on my members warring, in chapter 7, verse 23, but I see another law on my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, Paul says, who should deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul's recognizing that he's at war. And then we, we turned to Romans chapter 13 last week, and we read in Romans chapter 13 that Paul went on to say that, that love worketh no ill will to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that knowing, Paul says, that knowing the time, the time, what time is it? That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Amen. There's too many Christians asleep, too many Christians slumbering, too many Christians just kind of laying around, not fighting. For now is our salvation nearer than we first when we believed. Verse 12 in chapter 13 we read, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Now that leads us to this war and we need, uh, Paul's telling us we need to put on the armor of light. So Ephesians chapter 6, what is this armor of light? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 this is where we're going to be at this morning. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. That's how you need to equip yourself. It's simply by putting on the whole armor of God. We're going to uh, talk this morning. I'm going to preach on this morning how to equip yourself with the whole armor of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, now Lord, you know I'm nothing. And Father, I'm just praying that you would use me this morning. Father, you know I'm just a wicked sinner. And Lord, that these people are not going to be fed unless your Holy Spirit feeds them, Lord. And Father, I just pray your Holy Spirit moves among us, leading and guiding us, Father. And I just pray that you'll build a hedge of protection around every heart in this room, Lord God, that the devil can't come get that seed. 
And Father, I just pray a special blessing on every soul in here, Lord. Father, I, they're searching, they're needing, they're, they need to be fed, Lord. I ask you to feed them. And Father, feed me, Lord. And Father, I just pray that everything we do in here will be glorifying and lifting up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, I just thank you for Jesus Christ and thank you for the blood that was shed for my sins and for these people's sins. And I'm praying all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So verse 10, go back up at verse 10. Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Notice, not in your might. Amen. First and foremost, we're fighting a war, but we're fighting it in the might of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the might of God. It's in His might, not in my might, not in our power. If a person goes and joins the military in America, they're not fighting by their own might. Amen. They don't take their own 4 by 4 truck and say, okay, I'm ready to go to war. And, and, and they have their own 22s and their own 38, and they don't have their own weapons, right? They're equipped by the United States government. And I'm glad of that. <laughs> I'm so glad of that. I'm glad we don't have a bunch of rednecks running around 4 by 4s you know, that are in our military. That they're equipped with the best that a billion dollars can buy. The best that a trillion dollars can buy. That's what our government got. That's what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the best that money can buy. He's equipping us with the best weapons. And he's about to list those out. It's by his power, by his might, not in yourself. Don't ever rely on yourself. One, thing, one theme you're going to get out of this study as we go through these different sermons, the, the main theme of this is don't trust yourself. Don't fight with yourself. Don't use your power. Don't use your might. Always rely on God. Always rely on the power of the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Always lean on Him. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. Not part man and part God. Don't say, well, I'm going to use a little bit of God here and a little bit of man here and a little bit of myself here. No, you need to use all of God. It's the whole armor of God. You know... I like to watch videos of wartime, especially, I'm real interested in World War II. And I see these videos of World War II, and I love to watch, but I've never seen these old black and white videos of World War II, and I've never seen them running around in, in, in shorts and flip-flops carrying brooms. They're always equipped, right? They always have the fatigues, they always have the, they always have the armor, they always have helmets on, they're always running around. But that's the way Christians are running around today. They're in a war and they're at, they don't have any armor on and they're running around in shorts and flip-flops carrying a broom or a broom handle or something, you know. Never expecting what's going to happen. Don't you know the devil's laughing at Christians today? Because he's there all armored up and the devil's ready to fight and ready to go to war. And here's these Christians, just easy pickings. Just e That's why Christians are getting knocked out right and left, brothers and sisters. That's why they're not coming to church. That's why they're getting knocked out right and left because they don't realize they're at war. And they don't realize they're, when they're at this war that the devil's out to get them. And the world's out to get them. And their selves are going to destroy them. They're going to destroy themselves. Put on the whole, all of it, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's why we're doing this. He's wily, like wily coyote. The old roadrunner, Wiley, that's how he is. He's wily. He's always up to something. He's always conniving. He's always doing something. Right when you think you've got the devil figured out, he'll come at you a different way. Amen. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I've lived it over and over. In my, right when I think, okay, I've got this sin figured out, he'll find another way to sneak in there, and boom, he'll get me, man. He's wily. But we've got to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at verse 12. Important truth. Let's get this lined out. This is a very important truth. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a physical fight. This men, brothers, I'm talking to the men in here, you're not going to ball up your fist and punch out the devil. You're not going to ball up your fist and punch at the world. The Lord don't, won't let you do that. As a matter of fact, the Lord says if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. Amen? I heard a woman say amen out there. Didn't hear very many men. Yeah. If, if the Lord says, I want you to not fight back unless you're defending your family. You, you, gotta, you need, sometimes you've got to take the options of not fighting back. Physically. But the point is, is when you put on the whole armor of God, you're putting on the spiritual armor. You're not putting on a physical armor. And this is a physical fight. 
This, I mean, this is a spiritual fight. Excuse me, this is a spiritual fight. This is not a physical fight. This is not something you can punch out. This is not something physically you can, you can attack. And notice, it says we wrestle not. It's a wrestling match. It's a fight, not against flesh and blood. Guys, this is not something you can physically see with your eyes. That's where the world gets you, is they deceive you because they, get, they, they show up beautiful. And they show sin as very beautiful. And they show themselves as being very beautiful. And they show all this beauty to it, and it'll lead you straight to hell. They, you can't see this. And the best thing God can do for you is to take those blinders off your eyes for a moment and see what's happening in the spiritual world. I've had that happen to me one time in my life. Where I had God just for a moment... I was, in a, I was in a situation of sin, and just for the moment, the Lord, I guess he wanted to show me how stupid what I was dealing with, and just for a moment, he, closed, he, he, he had the blinders come off my eyes for just a moment, and I seen, the, I seen a demon there. I'll say it's a demon because it's had this face like, ah, and just for a moment, and it just took me back. Dr. Ruttman talks about when he was talking to that Catholic priest on the steps there in Louisiana, and he wasn't, he wasn't yet saved. And he said for a moment, he said when that Catholic priest was smoking that cigar and he blew that cigar smoke, he said the light hit it and he said, I could see a demon's face for just a moment. It's like God wanted to show him for just a moment. And I've had that happen in my life. And it made me realize this is not something, this, there's something behind this more than the physical aspect I can see and feel. There's a spiritual wickedness I'm fighting. And you've got to realize that. Guys, look, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Those, that's demons against powers. There's powers, guys, that you can't fight back with with your fists. You can't hit and kick this stuff back. It's spiritual wickedness. This should scare you this morning. Because some of you are trying to fight it physically. And you need to get right with the Lord and start trying to fight this spiritually. And not by your might, right? Now you know why it's not your might. Because when you get into the spiritual realm, that steps out of our power, right? Amen. Even the world recognizes this. Nothing scares the world worse than a ghost. The world thinks they see a ghost and it's, oh, oh, oh. It, 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 I've never heard of a ghost coming in and beating somebody up. But they're so scared of a, of a little image of a ghost. See, just a little touch of the spiritual side of the world. The world goes crazy, guys. We should recognize that there's a spiritual wickedness and we can't fight it back. We can't fight back. We can't physically attack this thing. And we need to, we need to lean on the Lord Jesus Christ and His power and His might in the Lord. All right. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. In high places. This is stuff going on in the world, guys, that we can't... We see how the world's turning with the politics and the way the governments are turning... You should understand that that's the devil running this world system. Amen. Shouldn't surprise you. Spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, now we recognize that. Let's move on. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen. Verse 14. Stand, therefore. Listen. The main thing about putting on the whole armor of God is you can have the whole armor of God on and if you run, you're done. You've got to stand. You've got to make a stand. The whole theme of this is withstand, stand, stand. Back up here in verse 11. Stand, stand, make a stand, fight. But he says, withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Paul's trying to get it into our thick heads. We need to make a stand. Make a stand. Stand. Get, stand against the devil. Don't stand like Gomer Powell. Stand like John Wayne. Amen. We're in a war. We don't want Gomer Powell going to war for us. We want John Wayne. Amen. you got to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. You got to make a stand. And you got to stand, and you got to stand like John Wayne. Don't stand like Gomer Powell. When you look at the way this armor, we're about to look at all this different armor. This armor that we're about to see is basically a Roman soldier's armor. And if you know anything about the Roman soldier, he was made to fight, and he was made to fight back to back. 
If he turned his back, that's when he would lose. He had no armor to protect his back. Everything was made for the front. In other words, his, the, the, they, were made, they designed that armor so that guy would fight and not run. Amen. It's like a dog. If you, you, if you don't stand up to a dog, if you run from a dog, you will get chased. It could be the littlest chihuahua or the biggest, biggest dog you can think of. It will chase you. And that's how the enemy is. But if you turn and stand against your enemy, you know what that does? That takes just a little bit of courage out of your enemy. Your enemy, when he's, all of a sudden, he says, oh, this, this, this person's ready to fight. That's like a bully, right? You do that to a bully, and all of a sudden, they don't, they don't want to bully you no more. When you're ready to stand, guys, you've got to make a stand. I know some of you are fighting some stuff. Some of you are fighting some sins. Maybe some of you are fighting some things the devil's doing to you. Whatever you do, just keep standing. Because your armor's designed to stand against the devil. Amen. Not to run. Stand. you got the Lord. you got the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a stand. Amen. You know, it's like you've seen some of those old war movies. They'll look at each other and say, you know what? If we're going to die, we might as well die like men. Let's fight. See what happens. In other words, if they're going to kill us, and it looks like we're going to die anyway, let's not just roll up in a little ball and let them come up here and just kill us. Let's stand up and fight. Let's take some of them down with us. That's the kind of attitude you have to have as a Christian. You say, you know what? I'm going to stand. They might get me. They might wipe me out. But I'm going to take some of them with me. Amen. Amen. We've got, to, we got to stop being so yellow belly. We don't know no more Gomer Pauls. We need some John Waynes. Amen. Amen. I love these, you know, that's why I, was, I gravitated to Dr. Upman. And I know some of y'all don't like Dr. Upman because he's rude, he's crude, he says stuff he probably shouldn't say. But you know what I like about Dr. Upman? He's a man. Amen. And I, I don't want to follow, I see some of these preachers and some of these pastors, I'm like, I wouldn't even follow them to the bathroom. They're, they're like weenies. They're just this close to being gay. I mean, they're walking around all fluffy, and, and it's like they, they couldn't fight the way out of a paper sack. Why would I want to follow you? I, want, I, I, I like Jesus Christ because he was a man. He was a man's man. And being a man doesn't mean you have to fight physically. You didn't see Jesus Christ fighting physically. He was saying you'll turn the other cheek. Jesus Christ was very kind. But what the world does is they, take, they mistake kindness for weakness. And you can be very kind and be very, very strong, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. But there's times where Jesus Christ had about this enough of it, and what did he do? He took the tables and, the ch and he started turning them over. Right there in the temple. He got the little quarter whips and he started whipping them out of there. That's our Jesus Christ. There's a time to fight. There's a time to make a stand. There's a time to do that. And we, above all, you need to stand. Having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore. We need to make a stand. Enemies lose a little courage when you stand up to them. So let's look at the armor. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. The first, there's going to be seven articles to this armor. And the first article or the first thing to this armor is the belt of truth. Loins girt about with the truth. You got a belt of truth. You got the truth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know what? You got the truth, and the truth holds everything together. It holds everything together. It all hangs on the truth. You've got the belt of truth, guys. You should be able to make a stand because you got the truth. Amen. You have the truth, and the devil and the world that you're fighting don't. Amen. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. And that's how we are. You know why we're so bold? You know why I'm so in your face with authority and everything? Because I've got the truth. Amen. And the more I've studied this truth, I just get bolder and bolder. I get braver and braver. You know, that's why I can stand on a corner and shout at people in the cars. <laughs> and they give me dirty looks, and I've had them cuss me out and say stuff. You know what I do? I just get louder. Because <laughs> i got the truth. And it makes me bold, man. It makes me bold because I know they don't have the truth. And when you've got the truth, man, it gives some power to you. The truth gives you power, and it all hangs. That, that belt of truth, it held everything together. The breastplate was hanging, your sword was hanging on it. All the stuff was, was, it all started there with the belt. It all cinched everything together. The truth is that important. Let's look at the next one. 
And having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. We can't defend ourselves if we don't live a righteous life. Amen. That breastplate was there. It was the main part of the, of, the, of the armor. And it's all about living a righteous life, guys. It's hard to defend yourself against the devil in the world when you're not living right. Amen. It really is. And we all know that to be true. We've all, if you've been a Christian any length of your time, you've had somebody call you a hypocrite. You're nothing but a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. All you Christians are hypocrites. Yeah, we're hypocrites. Just like you're a hypocrite. You've got to live a righteous life and try to live a righteous life so they can't attack you. you you've got to have that breastplate of righteousness. But you know what? I've got some great news for you this morning because some of y'all are back in there thinking, ooh, I don't live a very good life. I'm not very righteous. But you've got the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. And remember, this is not a physical thing. And some of y'all are having trouble with your righteousness. But remember, this is a spiritual battle. And if you're in a spiritual battle, you're relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're relying on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're relying on His righteousness. So there's some great truth in that, man, that should give you some power. Because you know you got the truth. And you know, you know what? I know I'm not a very good person, but I know Jesus Christ is. Amen. See, if you don't like me, I'm not trying to sell you me. If, if you don't like things I do, that's fine. I, I don't like things I do either. I mean, there's things I do that I embarrass myself. But Jesus Christ has never embarrassed me. I, Jesus Christ has never embarrassed me, not one time. He's never done anything wrong. He's righteous in every way. So if I can take Jesus Christ and put him on, then I've got his righteousness. So I'm going to stay in him. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. It's all about the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when we're saying this righteousness of Jesus Christ, we're talking about doing these works, these righteousness through Jesus Christ, according to Philippians 1. Everything we're doing is through Jesus Christ, allowing him to do it for us. It's, remember, it says in his power, in his might. Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So that's the shoes of preparation. That's a gospel message. You need to be, be prepared to give the gospel message. That's part of the armor. That means you need to be a soldier that's ready to go. That's one thing about soldiers is they're always ready to go. They've got to be ready to go to war. They've got to be ready to fight. They might get woke up at 1 o'clock in the morning. You can't say, well, can I wait till 7 before you attack me? Because I want to get some more sleep. No, you got to get up. Let's go. They're fighting. We got to fight. See? You got to have shoes prepared to give the gospel at any time, guys. Yeah. One great way to do that is always have a gospel track on you. Always have gospel tracks on you. You might have some run into somebody that says they need the gospel. Or they want the gospel. Or you might have an opportunity to give somebody the gospel. But you might only have like a couple of seconds. And you don't have time to talk to them about Jesus Christ. But you can give a gospel track. And that gospel track will go with them through the rest of as long as they keep it, amen. I've been, I always try to keep gospel tracts on me, and I use it as a business card. Like, I'll use it as, a, as my business card. Somebody says, well, where's your church at? I'll give them a gospel tract because it has our map on there and everything. They never know that they're getting a gospel tract until they flip it over and start, what's this? You know? And I might be long gone, <laughs> and they'll be getting the gospel message. You can do that too. It's like, well, I want to invite you to church. Here, come out. Here's, here's how you get there. And it has a map on it, and they're getting a gospel tract on the other side. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, verse 16, above all, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith. Amen. Faith is your main defense and first defense. It's all about faith. Believing in Jesus Christ. Believing God's going to do what He says. Believing that God can win the war. Believing that you're on the winning side. Believing that you have the power to win. Believing that, the power, that you do have the power and you will win. Believing, believing, believing. Faith, faith, faith. It's all about faith. See, when the world doesn't have the breastplate of righteousness, while you have Jesus Christ, the devil doesn't have anything. See, when I say put on the breastplate of righteousness, I'm telling you, put on Jesus Christ. But what the world has is they don't have any of this. They don't have any of Jesus Christ. Do you see the advantage you have over your enemy? Amen. See, where your enemy, you're telling your enemy, you say, you got the belt of truth, and the world doesn't have the truth. 
Right? That's a great advantage. I tell you, put on the breastplate of righteousness. That means you have Jesus Christ and the world doesn't have Jesus Christ. Only a Christian understands the advantage that gives us, right? Amen. We, we're the only ones to understand. The world don't think that we have an advantage because we have Jesus Christ. We have every advantage in Jesus Christ. And they're not getting it. And when I tell you, put on the shoes of the preparation, we have the good news of the gospel. Look, look back up at verse 15. I'm going to point this out before we move on. It says, your feet and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, look, of peace. See, that's good news of peace. You can have peace with God. No matter what you're going through in your life, you can have peace with God. Amen. See, the world don't have peace with God. The wrath of God abideth on them. They don't have that peace that me and you have. Yeah, we know we mess up. Yeah, we can admit to some things, and we know we can clean some things up in our life, but we still have that peace with God that passes all understanding that the world does not have, and they don't understand. Jesus Christ says, the peace I give you and I leave with you, the world doesn't have that kind of peace. It's a peace that, man, we, we, take, we, we take it for granted. When I talk to people, and, and we, a lot of times when I talk to people and witness to people, and when they, when they first receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you know what they say? They say, I felt like there's a weight lifted off my shoulders. Amen. I don't know how many times somebody said that to me. I led a 14-year-old girl. I think she's about 14. I led her to the Lord, and we got down by the altar, and she was praying, and she got up. And you know what she turned and said to me? She said, it just feels so good. It just feels so good. You don't know how good it is until you have Jesus Christ. You, can't, you can tell people, oh man, I've got this peace. Peace, that, peace like a river. I've got the peace, peace. You know, we sing all these songs about peace, but you can't describe it unless you've got it. And the world doesn't have it. You've got the advantage in this war. That's what I'm trying to point out to you. And we're giving them the gospel of peace. And the world, they can't give that good news of peace. Oh, they give you entertainment and they give you these false hopes, but they can't give peace Amen. on any, to anybody at any place. Praise the Lord for that, Amen. that we have peace. Verse 16, and above all, taking the shield of faith. And like I was saying about faith is the first thing and faith is the last thing. Listen, you have the shield of faith and the world and the devil, all they have is doubt. You have faith and they have doubt. They doubt this sister here all the time. They doubt calling. She went in there to take that, that part poured out, and they doubted her that she was doing so well. The, the nurse told her, We've never ha I've never took one of these. I've never seen one of these took out before. And they doubted her. So what did they, they doubted her so much that they put her in there, and they made her drain, and they wanted to drain it to make sure that she wasn't lying, that she needed it. <laughs> and, and then as soon as that nurse found out what she ran, right? She ran and got all these other people, and she got her, in, and she's wheeling her around while she's laying there in the bed, wheeling her around. All these people are surrounding her, asking her all these questions of how she's getting better. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the world doubt, 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 doubt. And that's one thing about a Christian. I know. I know when I pass away where I'm going to go. I know and I believe that I'm going to be with Jesus Christ. I just know. When Brother Raymond was laying there in the emergency room, your, 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 your daughter was around and we were talking to you. And I didn't, you know, the doctor's always giving bad news, brother. You know how it is. And you were talking. And what did you tell me there when you were laying there? He goes, you say, well, I'm ready to meet my Lord. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. And your daughter didn't like that. Your daughter straight up told me, I don't like that. I don't like that. She didn't like that faith you have in Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking bad about it, but she just didn't like she, they, they, The world, when they're outside of the peace that Jesus Christ gives us through the Holy Spirit, they can't understand it, guys. They cannot understand that faith we have. All they can do is doubt. All they can do is doubt. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to stand, be able to, excuse me, wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. He's always firing at you. He's always firing at you. And you got faith. You got to put that shield up of faith. Faith. Because see, you're at war. You got faith. Yeah, it don't look like it's going to. Yeah, but I got faith. It's going to end up all right. It, see, no matter what happens, if I pass away, that's okay. I've got faith to know that I'm going to a better place. 
it always ends good for me once I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that's the kind of faith the world does not like. And they're always trying to shoot darts at it. Pow, pow, pow. And man, you just got to put up that shield of faith. Yeah, yeah. And take, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. Guys, that is the most blessed, blessed part of your armor. You don't, maybe you don't even realize it. But see, all this stuff here was meant for frontal attacks, see? The devil's after you, attacking you. And you're supposed to stand, stand, stand. But we all know in a war that you'd be standing, you could be standing, and somebody will hit you right in the back. Pow. And that's how a lot of men die. They don't, it's a bullet they don't see coming. Pow. Whatever. That helmet was designed for attacks from behind. Guys, that speaks to eternal security. That speaks to no matter. See, it's a helmet of salvation. No matter if you fall, no matter if you get hit, no matter if you fall down, you get hit from behind, you've still got salvation. Amen. That's what that speaks to, guys. And, of course, that's what the world doesn't have. They don't have that salvation in Jesus Christ. All they have is death. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's the sixth one. The sixth one is... The Bible, it's the, the, of course we know the Bible. You got to know your Bible, you got to use your Bible. If you've been in this church any length of time, you've heard me say it a hundred times. Read your Bible, study your Bible, get to know your Bible, because that's your weapon. Amen. See, the sword of the Spirit, that's where you can t attack back. All, all this other stuff, you're just defending yourself, defending yourself, defending yourself. But don't you get tired of taking it? Don't you want to give it every once in a while? Amen. Yeah. I get tired of it. I get tired of having to crawfish and, and not crawfish, but having to defend myself and defend myself and explain myself and explain myself and explain God and try to explain why God's doing so. Sometimes I just like to pick up my Bible. Sometimes I just like to, yeah, just stab somebody with it. You know how I like to do that? I like to say, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends thereof are death. There's never been a time that I've quoted that verse that doesn't get somebody stirred up. It bothers them. It bothers them. He that believeth in the Son of God is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Yes. You, you can stab some people with the Word of God. Boy, I remember we were walking down there in New Orleans at uh, Mardi Gras, and they had all, we went down Bourbon Street, and we had all the street signs. We went out there street preaching. And I walked around that corner down Bourbon Street, and that, there, you couldn't even get through there. There was people just like this. And the first thing the devil said to me in my mind was, you're going to get stabbed. And you'll never know who did it. And he was right. Somebody could have come up and just right there. And I would have never known who did it because it was like this. And we had these scripture signs like we hold up. We had them up on poles. And it said stuff. Just, just Bible. Just scripture. And I'll never forget it, man. And it was like, like I said, just packed like sardines in there. And the, there was four or five brothers in front of us, and Brother Chad Reese was with me. And Brother Chad Reese was behind me, and this big old biker, bald-headed biker. Of course, he was mean-looking, not like me. He was a big old guy. He come walking over there to Chad. He said, you're in the wrong blankety place at the wrong blankety time. And I was sitting in front of Chad and said, uh-oh, we're about to fight. Because <laughs> if you know anything about me, I don't, I don't mind throwing a punch or two. I can take a punch, too. You know, I don't get my... Rear end, we, we, but I wasn't going to let Chad get beat up. And I thought, here we go, man. And, and, and then Chad didn't say nothing. There ain't what else there's to say. And that guy just looked, ugh, looked mean at us. And we started walking down there, and the most amazing thing happened. That place, it's like the Red Sea. It just started going. It started, people started just parting. I didn't think there was room for people to part, but they did. And they got out of the way. And what was amazing to me is we walked through with those signs like this. They got straight getting out of the way, and everybody was looking up. Reading. Reading the Word of God. Amen. And they got out of the way. The sword of the Spirit. Amen. The spiritual power in these words, man. And we forget that. We forget to claim it. We forget to use it. When the devil came and attacked our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at his lowest moment in the wilderness and tempted him... Jesus Christ only would say, it is written. If you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus Christ said, it is written. 
Man shall not live by bread alone, by bread alone, but by the word of God Amen. that proceed out of the mouth of God. Now listen, this thing is powerful, guys. And as Christians, we forget we're equipped to use it. We can use it. We can use it to defend ourselves. We can use it to attack somebody, but use it. You got it. You better use it. The devil's using what he's got against you. You get, tired of, you get tired of defending yourself, man. Pull out the word of God, man. Give it to him. Amen. And you know what you say to him? Say, you can get mad at me. That's just what the Bible says. Don't get mad. This is what the Bible says. <laughs> put it, this is your authority, right? Amen. Put it on that. Just put it on that. Just put it on that. Let it defend itself. It's only been around 400 years right here. This King James has only been around 400 years. Nobody's knocked it down yet. You see what I'm getting at? Amen. you got something that's very powerful. Just use it. It can defend itself. It don't need, just quote it. That's all Jesus did. He just quoted it. And the devil had to flee, see. The devil had to flee. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, verse 18, the last one, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Your last armor you have you need to realize is prayer. Amen. That's communications. Any soldier that gets behind enemy lines and he can't communicate back with the home base, they're in trouble, deep, deep trouble. Right? They gotta, you got you to get, get, get back to home base, send in a fire, and send in some, uh, some air support. Do so, you know, but you can't, you're, you're cut off. You can't communicate. But guys, you've got the communication with God. You're never cut off with God. You can always pray to God. Morning, noon, and evening, you can pray to God and He'll be there. And you can get the supplies you need. That's what, that's what the communications were. I need more supplies. Lord, I, I'm not handling this. I need more supply of grace. And the Bible says you have grace abounding to you. You can't run out of grace. God's not going to run out of grace. God, I need your riches. I need your mercy. I got mercy. I've really messed up, Lord. I, I really, really screwed up. I shouldn't have done that, Lord. It's a really awful sin. I know, Lord, I, I just need your mercy. I need your grace. I got it. Right here. You've got the power in prayer. Amen. There's your seven right there. There's your seven. So, in closing quickly... I heard of people, and they'll say, well, I'd like to pray the whole armor of God every morning. And that, that's a good prayer. But how do you apply that, though, through your daily walk? Like, how do I apply that? How do we sum this up and say, okay, how do I live this? Because it's one thing to pray, okay, Lord, put me at the whole armor of God, but then you get up and you go to work and things happen, and, or you're, you're at Walmart and somebody makes you mad, or you just get tempted, or whatever it is. Things are happening in your life, so how do you apply this? So let's go back through it again real quickly, all seven of them. And what, what is the basic truth about all this? The basic truth is, number one, is truth. Amen. It's truth. Walk daily, friends. Walk daily knowing you got the truth. Amen. The world doesn't. The world's got lies. The devil's the father of lies. They've got lies. You're the only one that's got truth. Stand tall in the truth. Number two, Righteousness. Live your daily life righteously. All the world has is unrighteousness. They want to live on unrighteousness. They want to live a filthy life, unclean. They want to live as wicked as they can. Let them do it. You should live a righteous life. That's what you need to do. Thirdly, gospel of peace. You need to try to get the gospel out. Do something for the Lord. Get the gospel out. Give tracts out. Tell people about Jesus Christ. You'll, you'll, you'll be surprised how good you feel when you can just tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you ever lead somebody to Jesus Christ, you'll want to do it a hundred times more. Amen. There's, I'm telling you, there's nothing like getting down on your knees with somebody and them getting up, like I said, and that 14-year-old girl saying, it just feels so good. You'll never forget that. You'll never forget when you get to see somebody's life change just like that. Number four is faith. The shield of faith. faith. Guys, just keep your faith. Amen. Above all, just keep your faith. Believe in what Jesus Christ said. Amen. Just, just believe it. Like a little child. Amen. I, I, guys, this is all about having childlike faith. Just believe like a little child believes in Santa Claus. They make fun of us. 
Do you believe in Jesus just like little kids believe in Santa Claus? Yeah, I do. I believe in Jesus Christ. The difference is Santa Claus was a lot. Jesus Christ is the truth. Yeah, I believe in Jesus Christ. Number five was salvation. You need to walk around knowing that you're saved. Daily. This is, I'm telling you how to live your life with this whole armor of God. So daily you're living in truth and righteousness and spreading the gospel and having faith. But number five is, you've got salvation. Hey, when you wake up, and like me and my wife woke up and the refrigerator's going out. You know, you get up and everything, it won't freeze. Nothing, you know, there's always, guys, we're living in the world, there's always something wrong. Get up, the car won't start. There's a flat or, you know, you get a bill in the mail. But no matter what, I'm saved. <laughs> I know where I'm going. I know where heaven's at. And I know it's real and that's where I'm going. I'm saved. That, 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 that's how you live your life. It's part of the whole armor of God. Gospel of peace, of faith, salvation. The world doesn't have faith, they have doubt. The world doesn't have salvation, they have condemnation. And number six was the Bible. We have the Bible. That's praise the Lord for that. The world has fairy tales. So you should live with the Bible, reading your Bible. And seventh was prayer. Live a prayerful life. That's how you can have daily the armor of God on. It's all about truth and righteousness, gospel of peace, faith and salvation, and reading and studying your Bible and praying. See, that's the seven things. That's how you can equip yourself to attack to, from attacks from the devil in the world and also to defend yourself, but also to attack back. You're in a war. And if you're in a war, don't just always be on the defensive. Hey, attack back. Amen. When people tell me, I've had people, I have people tell me about evolution stuff and I start laughing at them. <laughs> you believe that? This, this, you see the looks on their faces. They're like, this, you really believe that nonsense? See, I've got the Bible. You've got fairy tales. Those are fairy tales. They don't mind calling my book a fairy tale. They don't mind laughing at me about this. Man, I don't know, man. I'm more like Elijah. I just like to laugh right back. You're stupid. You believe that stupid stuff? you got the truth right here. <laughs> I've got a final authority. This is a real smart man. He said, a man that has two watches never knows what time it is. But a man with one watch always knows what time it is. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that. Amen. That means that when you've got different authorities, you, you, you're like the world, the world has different authorities. They don't know if they want to believe science or if they don't know if they want to believe religion or philosophy. or They don't know what to believe because they keep changing. But when you have one man here with the final authority, I always, always know what time it is. <laughs> Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your whole armor of God that we can put on daily. And, Lord, Father, if there's somebody, Father, that's dealing with something this morning, Lord, that uh, you know what it is, Lord, we would never know. Father, I just pray you speak to the heart the truth, Lord. Give them grace to bear it. And, Father, Lord, I ask you to just wrap your loving arms around them through the Holy Spirit and love on them, Father. Lord, let them know that you love them in their heart. Speak to the heart right now, Father, and tell them, first off, Lord, that you love them and that you died for them and you want the best for them. Lord, they, if, they're any honest, if they're honest with themselves, they at all, Lord God, they'll know that the world doesn't love them. The world's ready to destroy them. And the devil for sure doesn't love them. But Lord, show them in their heart, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, that you love them and you want the best for them. And all this stuff is to help them live a better life and an abundant life. And Father, Lord, I just thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for the healing you've been given in this church. Lord, we give you all the honor and glory and praise, Father. And Lord, we thank you for the wisdom you've been giving the doctors to help us get healed up, Lord. But above all else, Lord, we appreciate the blood of Jesus Christ that we can claim. And we thank you for the healing blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, Lord, that he came down and walked among men and was healing people and giving us the truth and giving us these words and wisdom. Lord, we thank you for manifesting yourself through him. And Lord, we thank you for the cross. And Lord, this morning, Father, as we try to fight this battle and we're in this war, Lord, we're just pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we need your power, your might. We can't do it on our own, Lord. We get in our own way and mess it up, Lord. We need you to come in, Lord, and do something great in our lives. Lord, we want to bring fruit for you, Lord. We want to be good for you, Lord. We want to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, Lord. We can't do it without you. And Lord, we love you.
And we thank you so much for loving us. And I'm praying all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, friends. This is Pastor Keegan Hall of Indian Gap Baptist Church of Indian Gap, Texas. If you'd like to contact us, you can do it at IndianGapBaptist.com. On the internet, it's IndianGapBaptist.com. But I have a question for you. If you died tonight, do you know if you would go to heaven? You know, if you're not sure, let me show you a few verses out of the Bible so you can know if you have eternal life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So that verse tells us there that you can know you have eternal life. And I want to show you how you can know that. Jesus Christ talked in John chapter 3 verse 16. And most people have heard this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now it's an amazing verse of course talking about how God gave Jesus Christ as a gift to the world. But Verse 17 and 18, he went on to say something interesting. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So the whole reason Jesus Christ came into this world was to save you and to save me and you. But in verse 18, he says something that's amazing. He says that he that believeth on him is not condemned. He's stressing a faith. It's putting your faith into Jesus Christ. But he says there in verse 18, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So he says you're condemned already if you haven't believed in Jesus Christ. It's not like you're going to go to heaven and you're going to stand before God and you're going to have God put your good deeds on the scale and your bad deeds on, on the other side of the scale and he's going to weigh it and if you've been a good enough person down on this earth that he'll let you into heaven. It doesn't work that way. Jesus Christ is real explicit here to say that you're condemned already. You need a Savior right now. The same chapter down in verse 36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. It goes back to a believe, putting your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But the verse continues, And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, it's going on right now. You need a Savior right now. You need to be saved from a devil's hell. Paul sums it up real good here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's putting your faith in Jesus Christ from the heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's very important to confess Jesus Christ because the mouth shows where the heart's at. And in verse 13, he sums it up, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So friends, as simple as just bowing your head and saying a prayer, something like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you can came up from the grave and are alive right now listening to me. I invite you into my heart to save me. Please save me, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you prayed something similar to that, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us at IndianGapBaptist.com. And God bless you, and until next time. Casting all your care upon Him.